Hey, thanks for checking in on Bathtub Sir, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, the trilogy. There's good news and there's bad news. The good news, I guess, is, is that we've realised it wasn't Lana who uh, committed a murder at the police station. That was just Jake Marshall being weird and creepy, trying to steal evidence of the SL9 case so he could continue investigating it. So that's kind of good. We cleared her name up there. The bad news is, though, that all points to her... <laughs> like of having to commit the murder in the parking lot because if, if she wasn't at the police station then she must have been at the parking garage killing killing people you know um so there's good and bad however just before the judge was about to put his verdict in true phoenix Wright fashion emma's come back out the blue she did run away after a bit of a like i don't know not what to say a hissy fit but a bit of a mad moment and she's back so hopefully she can help us out here your honor wait emma the defence has an objection, a scientific objection. Right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Right? Are you this girl's guardian? Your Honour? Oh, um, in a sense. Please, Your Honour, all I'm asking is for a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. Okay, that's very generous of him, I guess. I... I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Joe Dark killings. Oh, of course, Joe Dark was a serial killer, wasn't he? And one of his victims was Jake Marshall's brother, which is why he had such a personal investment in the case. And um, it was due to, like, expire. Like, the evidence would have been thrown away because a certain number of years have passed since the case was, like, quote-unquote solved. But anyway, we're, we're going off track here. Now that she mentions it... The names of both Sky sisters were in that file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprints had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing. The other handprint. You mean the traces of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So, I ran over free and looked at it again. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why I read that as free. That obviously says there. That must have been Edgeworth in his three minutes. So, did you find something? Um, no. Huh? Sorry, I, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Um, is that all? Please don't be mad. I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Bright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them... Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Me? Oh, boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright. With regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um, it appears that the fence is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be of more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Whatever I've needed to concentrate is now. Oh no. What could be wrong with that handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? Oh my god, I don't know. I ain't got a bloody clue. Of course we have to object, but under what? Under what reason? I don't know. The only thing I can think of... I'd have to look at the handprint, but depending what side the thumb's on, we could tell what hand was used. And we could maybe figure out which direction the person was walking from what side the thumb was on. But whether that would help at all, I don't know. Objection! This handprint left at the crime scene. Okay, so it's on the... Oh, that makes... Hang on, if I'm walking... Alright, so they're on their way out, I think. On that. They'll use their right hand as they're walking out. And they have to lean against something. So they're injured, maybe? I don't know. Clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is your grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been 
been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, something that when drawn will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. What the hell's he on about? Let us pray the defence isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove something is missing in the floor plans? Are you kidding me, right? I ain't got a clue. Not a clue. What could change the floor plans? Murder weapon? No, I don't know. Um. Okay, we've got so much here. Parking lot floor plans. Victim shoe. It's got to be something with blood in it, right? This glove, maybe? Extremely thin rubber glove. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Have we got the clue? Now, do we lose? Should we just see if we lose lives on this? Because if not, it's going to be... I, I mean, I have to jump cut. But... If we don't lose lives, I'm just going to go through each one. I know that's, that's a terrible way to play. I'm not concentrating at all. But let's try the ID. It makes no sense, though. <laughs> As they say back west, even a blind man can hit with buckshot. Wait, what? Why do you understand? I thought it was Emma. That is, so long as he's facing the general direction. It seems Mr. Wright's not sure which direction to face. It's no use. The more evidence there is, the greater the chance of me being wrong. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just calm down, Mr. Wright. Try and remember what the evidence room was like on the day of the crime. What is it that bothers me about this blood mark? Okay, yeah, give me another chance. Let us pray. Okay, okay. Right. <clears throat> can... Which item can prove something is missing from the floor plans? Think about it, goddamn think about it, you big sack. Parking lot floor plans ain't gonna change the squat, are they? Um, okay. <clears throat> Let me have a think. Find out the crime scene. What changes the floor plans though? I have no clue. Oh, God. Evidence room floor plan the floor plans is what we're looking at, right? Oh but there's blood there. Shall we present that for a laugh? Take that. Oh no, we got it wrong again. Okay. I'm going to have a real think here. And maybe go through each item individually. God damn it. This is not the start, the start we needed. But at least we're not losing any lives for this. Because that would be terrible. Okay. Honestly, like, third time lucky here. Just seen the blue badger panel was allegedly dancing in the evidence room at the time of the murder at the PD. A handprint. If it was dancing, I'm trying to think on the videotape we saw. It was dancing there, wasn't it? We saw it dancing there all the time. Was it in front of um, Gumshoe's locker or the locker with the blood print on? I, I think this could be it. Take that. What about that piece of plywood? The Blue Badger, mascot of the police force. Defender of truth, guardian of proof. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The Blue Badger is not here. So? So watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Yes, we saw him a million times. Well? Well, what? Ah! That's right, so long as the blue badger is dancing here, it would be impossible to place a handprint at this spot on the locker. Yes, oh my god, okay. Oh man, see, I'm so annoyed at myself because the one time I actually stopped and read what the freaking um, descriptions of the evidence said, it was easy. For God's sake, sometimes I get overwhelmed by how much evidence is in there. I just sort of rush through and look at the actual item, not the description. What? So that means 
Um, just exactly what does that mean? It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. Mr. White, think it through scientifically. Emma, on that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? After you put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint on that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in. Just one moment. I will not allow such far-fetched border dash in my courtroom. It may sound far-fetched, Honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice. But twice? Oh my god, really? <laughs> but how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand, from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is, the other time, so you're saying the blood was already there at this point? Behind him, the blood was already there? I think that's what he's saying. Someone bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. Yes, it had to have been. It had to have been. Detective Goodman when he was really murdered. Objection! That's ridiculous. I refuse to accept your absurd claim. Objection! The murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, that does not explain the blood mark found on the locker. Objection! So then, assuming this murder you purport has really happened, when did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? Uh oh. To summarise, the defence claims that prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was posing as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in that evidence room. That's right, the blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well, then tell us. When did the first incident occur? As Mr. Edgeworth said, proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, will the defence please present its evidence? What shows when the first crime took place? Um. Oh god, oh god. Found at prosecutor's office of crime scene. Has it got to be the list? Let's have a look. It's got to be this, right? All 20? Oh, I'll just go for it. If the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have had to enter it. And in order to do so, an ID card would have been required. ID card. Oh, the ID card record. Did we get it right? Yes. Oh, thank God. I think we did. Officer Meekins brought the blue badger panel into the evidence room at... Let's see here. 4.50pm. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be... 4.40pm. Ah. Ah. I was Edgeworth. Just what have you done? I never would have figured you had the nerve, boy. Drop the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Hmm. Nope, I ain't getting it. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminal test that blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away by the real murderer. They would have had just 10 minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That would mean the crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's look at the chart again. It's this recurring seven fucker. There's only one of a card number remaining. Seven, 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 seven. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Wait, is that his number? Oh no, because his number would be on the record. Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered it along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with seven sevens. Mr. 
Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP. Find out whose ID number is 777777. <laughs> That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card. At least, at present. What? Explain yourself, sir. The ID number 77s seven belongs to someone with a rank of captain or higher. Someone who is a so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's identity. But that's ridiculous, just how? I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There is one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge filed against an executive is accepted. An official charge? You are a lack, aren't you? For your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander is it? Okay. Let me ask you a question. Yes? No, not to you. To her, the defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. Look, Lana! Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we've looked up her ID number. And it's not 77s. Seven seven. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I want to ask. What I want to know is one thing about that incident. The SO9 incident. Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only legitimate uh, use legitimate evidence? I kind of butchered that line. <clears throat> Did you really only use legitimate Evans? Do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At the time, we... Occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. L Lana! I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realised it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look at me, an investigator in that crime, in the eye, and say that you did? Chief Prosecutor, you did I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why would you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to do in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana... Even if it involved forging evidence... Well, this is for serial killer Joe Dark. They used forged evidence in order to put him away and give him ultimately the death sentence. That's pretty bad. Was there a strobe light in this courtroom? What's going on? See? That's what I'm talking about. No! No! Order! 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 Lana's remarks called such a stir. The chaos in the courtroom could not be quelled. The conclusion of the trial would have to wait until the following day. God, it sounds like a crazy football match right now. Really, can't they get order in the courtroom? Oh God, so what does that mean? To be continued? Another day of investigation? I thought that would have been the final call. Oh my God, we'll save over save file three. And we'll get back to it, I guess. So, Jesus Christ, we're opening so many cans of worms. I don't know how this is all going to be connected. Obviously, it will be. But now we need to look back into seeing how the Joe Dark case had forged evidence. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. 
We did what we had to, in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. I... I didn't know. I never knew that the S-09 incident was just another name for... the Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone's heard about these killings but me. Lana wanted Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there, in the file. Joe Dark's last victim was prosecutor Neil Marshall, which is Jake Marshall's brother, right? When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. But what did you have to do with those killings, Emma? Oh, was that? Yeah, okay, we've seen Joe Dark. He's a creepy looking dude. On the night prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark tried to kill me. What? He tried to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. So that means you... Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. I didn't see that one coming. Uh oh, we better talk to you about this maybe? I hope you don't mind. Hey, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, I clear my throat and sniff. Disgusting me. We need to learn more about the SL9 incident. It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of the year too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. And suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, the prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage, but before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then, what happened? I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind, but I can still see it now. A permanent picture? Let's, uh, we'll get to the permanent picture in just a minute. I don't remember the moment when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana, why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes, but I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumours about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean. It's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true, even though he may not have known it. Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold, like she is today. She must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. Okay, let's hear about this permanent picture that's burned into your memory. What did you see in the instant that crime occurred? His hair goes up at a point like a pineapple. The dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently, I passed out. When I came to, Lana was craving me in her arms. Poor Emma, you've been through so much. I, I couldn't bring myself to testify about that incident. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago, you must have been 14. That's understandable. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I wanted to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. And find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. I see. 
I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes Emma tick. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Lala's office at that time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor. Oh, there's no mystery there. Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police department. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. But why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective offices and the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? But Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly. Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Dark case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Lana used to be a detective. I'd better have another talk with her. Okay, that's where we're heading to then. Thank you for giving us some more information about this. I really don't know why this couldn't have all come out towards the beginning. I suppose we didn't really know the SL9 case and Joe Dark would have been involved at the start. But let's go back to the detention centre. See if Lana will say anything to us. Look, Lana! Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul. Why should we? But, but Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana. Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago. And how the SO9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details, especially about the unusual change of jobs? I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. I suppose, yeah, thinking about it, it is a huge ju uh, jump from being a detective to chief prosecutor. You would have thought like a, a prosecutor would be made chief prosecutor, right? Not just a detective. Because she has no sort of um, history or practice prosecuting in a courtroom. She only gets the evidence and pr provides testimonies and stuff like that. That's all she has to say. A lot of revelations... Uh, excuse me, sorry Lana. A lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today. Not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one, two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well, though I expected as much. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. That trial, it really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I believed that no matter what happens, you'd always stick to the truth. It couldn't be helped, Emma. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is, at 5.15 there was no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana, what the witness, Miss Starr, said. About you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife. Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Emma, this doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. Right, okay, so we've still got two more topics to talk about. Detective Lana Sky and then the dark investigation. It's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing. They still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. Chief Gant? He was the de oh, <laughs> this is Lana, isn't it? He was the deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked the crime scenes. Damon Gant. He was everything I aspired to be. They were the best team ever. They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Emma really idolises her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was... To 
to gain experience investigating crime scenes, so you could use that experience in court, right? Dance help in the SL9 case was crucial to its resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Maybe I should ask more about this investigation of theirs two years ago. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Dark. Second in command? That means the investigation lead was Damon Gart, right? Yes. Deputy Chief Gart and I shared the same office and the same investigations. They even had the same office. We led a team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall and Angel Starr. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung-ho. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was the serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Now you tell us. Damon Gant and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in its final stages and Dark must have suddenly panicked. So he wasted until Gant and Marshall let their guards down and then fled the room. From there, he ran straight to the office shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So you were the first person to run to the scene, Lana? It appears so. I was filing some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Hang on, this doesn't make sense. Why is the knife in his back? If he's laying on top of him. How did he get the knife there? He must have had to proper reach around and stab him in like... The, in behind, I guess. Oh, well, maybe that's just something. I'm not looking too closely at it. It's probably nothing. Three bodies. Prosecutor Marshall, the victim, Emma, who had, been, who had passed out, and the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room and just held her. Can't blame her, after all her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident. That's right. Quite a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. What, what are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident. Just by chance. But that case was solved two years ago. At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall, yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. <laughs> what, so he never used to be some weird fake cowboy? I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. That case just might not be over yet. Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself. The Chief's office. Maybe we should have a look at the Chief's office. The site of the final SO9 murder. Okay, there we go. A new, a new place to visit. I really hope Gant isn't there because he makes me feel so uneasy. I can't remember how he sounds. Um, but to get there... Where do we go? Criminal Affairs Department? Oh no, is Gumshoe going to be here? It's been a while since we've seen him, actually. I don't see Detective Gumshoe anywhere. Things seem kind of quiet around here today. You're right. The Chief of Detectives seems the same, though. Why don't we go look for some other people to talk to? Right. We can come back here later. I want to go to, uh... Here? And who's outside this place, then? Howdy, Bambina. Oh, Mr. Marshall. 
I never thought things would turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Hey, Sarai, Sarai. You never know where life will lead you, eh, Bambina? I should have known my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy! Must be his pet cactus. Say, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. But, Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why did prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Huh. Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Hey, what you got? Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All of the detectives thought so too. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean that switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Darks, alright. But in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. Wait, so the wound in his brother didn't match the knife that Joe Dark had? What does that mean? It means there is a good chance that that knife was not the murder weapon. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. Could the facts have been concealed with forged evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars that the S-O-9 incident left behind. I got the looks, but he got the brains. He was one of the best prosecutors around. Is this your brother Neil, right? I mean, you look identical, really. I had just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he? Your brother? He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? You mean the... King of Prosecutors. Yeah, that Edgeworth now holds. I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. The day the SNI incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transfer. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning, and by nightfall there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently, someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. Right, let's hear about these um, metaphorical scars. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Miss Starr was fired, and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him too, the commissioners would get suspicious. No, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. I mean Damon Gann, and Land of Sky. You think it's Gart and Sky? Okay. I mean, it's obviously Gart got something huge to do with this. The investigation led Bleed, Damon Gunn, and his second in command, Land of Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah, Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She's never been the same since she left. Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Lana's secret? It all started two years ago. So, there you have it. That's my story.
Did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Too bad I won't be around to work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. Uh, see ya, Jake. Right, okay. Well, thank you for that. I mean, all things are pointing to it being gone, who we really need to scrutinise now. But how do I get to his freaking office? Is it through here? Oh, shit, is Angel Star gonna be here? No one's here today, not even Miss Star. Oh, thank goodness. Everyone's probably busy looking to what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. But we've proved in court today that on the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15pm. Yeah, I thought we were finally making some headway in our case. But instead, it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I've got to find all the answers by tomorrow. Hi, prosecutors. Oh, God, it's still not... I don't know how we get there. <laughs> I'll go here. There must be a way. There must be some route that we're missing. Mr. Eshworth isn't here. Maybe he's been questioned by an inquiry committee. We took a real beating in court today. Yeah, with Lana admitting to falsifying evidence two years ago. I guess we'll just have to come back later. Right, so this ain't the place. Okay, look. Let's think about this logically. We must have to go... Police department entrance. It must have to be in here. Okay, we've got something new here. Maybe we speak to this guy? This place is always pretty empty, but today's deserted. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Um, thanks. Well, he actually talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying what she did and the decision about what to do, about Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention our statement to the media and tomorrow's trial. There's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Um, sir, we'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. Just use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? Do you mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything ever. Shush, be quiet. Hey, you're right, you can't go in there, it's off limits. Now I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Chief's office. <laughs> he just said we can't go. Oh well. Here we go, a new place to explore. Sorry, what the hell? An organ? Oh man, this really, really, really has to be Gant's office. It's full of sort of obtuse arseholishness. Who has an organ in their freaking room? Is it a converted church? Whoa! Where am I? In the chief's office, silly. At least that's what it said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They used to call me Little Miss... Oh, I don't know what that word is. Batch? Back? It's probably an organ term that I don't know. I thought I was a genius until I tried teaching me notes. I never could remember where C was. Hmm. Oh shit. Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. Oh, <laughs> I've done his voice. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. So, righto, have you been swimming lately? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full too. What with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statement. Provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence? Two years have passed since that incident. Why have time flies? See that big picture on the wall over there? That's a picture of Lana, Neil and me. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it though. The vase! The 
vase that we put together in the evidence room. Yes, I saw it straight away. Thank you. Gaunt team picture. We'll take that. Uh, now what? <laughs> Hello? Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to look up here, so let's go out together. Oh, but this office, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate anymore. All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now, hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. Looks like we aren't welcome. It seems that case isn't over with yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Gart denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean, like a clue? There's got to be a way we can get inside the Chief's office. Oof, I ain't got a bloody clue, though. Go back to the prosecutor's office, maybe? See if Edgeworth is back? No. Okay. Um... Hmm. Let me think. Let's go back to here. Because he helped us out so much last time. Maybe he can help us again. Hey, pal. Detective Kumshu, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually, from serving everyone coffee. It sounds like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. Say, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Uh, why do you ask? He's had a fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world off his blood. Yikes. Alright, can we talk to you then? Maybe you can get us inside um, Gant's office again? But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky's the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, a prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that, but as you know, there's been a lot of rumours going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor keeps him safe from those who don't like him. But now, with this, are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey, Dick, keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Yes, sir. you got to take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir. It seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dark left behind during, was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Me. It seems Detective Gumshoe never realised Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His powers of recollection never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. Okay, I mean, it's better than nothing. Let's hear about Dark's crimes first. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take to serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So, it was an accident? An accident, yes. But it transformed him into an animal. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. Then he killed a lady who saw the second crime. A kid walked by just then, so we killed him too. Then, when he was burying the bodies, a jogger came upon the scene and was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. Wait, so he killed like five people in the space of like an hour or so? 
It seems he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So, he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily, Dark was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness, aka Emma. Right, okay, thank you Gumshoe. Um, but now let's present the murder weapon then. The Joe Dark murder weapon. This one here. Um, about this. Hey, is that... It has a tag attached to it with the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in the locker. On the day Detective Goodwin was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. I was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it! Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what was it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. Oh, quick, quick. Talk, talk. This knife, it was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at. Plus, it had his fingerprints on it too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well, anyway, take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found in Neil Marshall's back. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet, down to the last fibre. That's pretty conclusive. So we've got Neil's autopsy, cool. Stabbed in the back, died from punctured heart and lung. A knife tip was in the wound. It must have gone so deep inside in there. If you were stabbed from the back, it went through his lung and heart. A broken tip was found in the victim's body. Okay, cool. Well, there you have it, in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Garn. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now, and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around, if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, they'll be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'll be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The date was deleted the day he died. Oh. So in other words, Gumshoe was our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Uh, I can only imagine it's the picture. It has to be this, right? Let me share a little advice with you as a detective. If you don't have a clue... Oh, okay. So it wasn't that at all. This, maybe? About that jar. I think I've seen it before somewhere. Yeah, there we go. We was on the right track, just the, the wrong line. We got it. Somewhere. Or maybe it's one of those memories people have from previous lives. This must be the most uninformative detective I've ever met. Something about it makes me feel uneasy. It's like I'm in the chief's office and he's yelling at me. Chief gone. Where could I have seen that before? Here. Oh. No, what? Can we talk to him about it now? Oh no, what the hell? You've seen that vase before, Gumshoe, I know you have. Well, honestly, can't think right now. Um, maybe, I mean, we could, I don't know if we can do this right now. I might move about a bit again and see if anything's changed. I wonder if Edgeworth has got back. That would make sense of the, the way the game sort of flows, that he would be back now, maybe? Here? Yes, okay, there we go. So maybe he could tell us something that could change Gumshoe's mind. 
I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is! It looks like he's writing something. Oh, what? What are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Huh. I've had to live the past two years with rumours flying around. What's another alle allegation to me? Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Oh, what, well, straight away? What is that? I wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? Edgeworth is sitting right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth. Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground. Hold on. First, let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. He didn't even look. What? Let her off. <laughs> if you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says, Letter of Resignation. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean... I'm tired, right. I feel as if something inside me has died. But, Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Uh-oh. I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation, I wonder if I can use it for anything. That's definitely what we show to Gumshoe, 100%. Because he'll be like, no, no, wait, hang on, Edgeworth can't, can't resign. No, what's he doing? Stuff like that. Right, okay, that's good. Shall we talk to him a bit? There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used forced evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I can do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, uh, I mean that the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error. My responsibility is the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same no matter what excuse I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Huh. First last year's trial and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out of the trial. Tomorrow is the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? The list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists. That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. A picture? Something seems strange about it. Okay, we can present that as well. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered? You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I've never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this. Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out of the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning and then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to? That's right. Okay, is, was the chief trying to get you in the, the 
the right place at the wrong time, or whatever way that works. Is he trying to frame you? That's what I'm trying to say. Let's present this, and then we'll think about wrapping this one up. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gart's office. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. But it's got this sword on it. Yes, you're right. Ah, I remember now. Remember what? That was what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. There's a story behind its design. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Oh, well, will you talk to us about that now? Okay. Well, you know what? We'll do that next time. I really enjoyed this. It's great to get into uh, Phoenix Wright again. Um, the episodes are quite widely spaced because I just don't have the time to record these as often as I'd like. Uh, but I'm glad we got to do some today. If you enjoyed this episode of Phoenix Wright, please go ahead and leave a like. It helps me out so much and I always appreciate it. So thank you. If you want to see more, we, I think we're getting somewhere with this investigation. I'm hoping the trial will be a bit of a doozy tomorrow because we're building up some evidence that I think is going to really overflow and Gant's going to be the clear suspect. But please go and subscribe, I can bring it to you. Got any questions you want to raise? What do you think about the twists and turns of this one? What do you think of Jake Marshall? Is he really a good guy or is he a bad guy? Let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure I get back to you. Alright, see you!